Good morning, Chapel Hill. Wow. Okay, you guys got to teach 930 how to do that. That's impressive. It is so good to be with you this morning. I want to take a minute and welcome any visitors and guests we have among us. If you would take a few minutes after the service, come by the Welcome Center so that I can shake your hand, and we have a very sweet gift for you that you don't want to miss. I also want to welcome those who are joining us online. We're so grateful that you are with us as well. So I have some good news, some fun news to share with you, a couple of items of fun news. Um, last week, 10 of our youth and our young adults attended Amp It Up at the summit, and they went on retreat at Camp Horizon, and I hear that they just, they had a, a God-soaked time, that it was just a, a blessing to be a part of it, and so that just makes my heart so full when I hear our youth having those encounters with God. And another praise to share, Operation Backpack. As of July 12th, we raised $10,342.07. Praise God for that. I know that will be a blessing to so many. So, if you're interested in serving, we have some openings on our communion server team, our ushers, and it is a fun ministry, it's a sacred ministry. I promise that you get blessed far more than you can imagine. Um, if you're interested in serving in that way, I'll invite you to stop by the usher captain's uh, desk out in the fellowship hall, or you can call the church office and let them know that you'd like to serve. And one last announcement. I bet you didn't guess Vacation Bible School is going on this week. And I, all these colors, they just, they make you smile, don't they? They're going to have so much fun. We have 200 uh, kids pre-k through sixth grade signed up and so I invite you to keep them in your prayers keep our 90 volunteers in your prayers that this week would just be full of God's spirit and uh, full of fun as well um, they're still looking for some help in the kitchen preparing snacks so if you have a little bit of time this week and you would like to serve in that way please let Allison Roth know that at this time, I will invite you to stand so you can join me in our call to worship. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you and also with you. The risen Christ is with us. Praise the Lord. Well, hey there, Chapel Hill. It's great to be with you this morning. As we enter into God's presence this morning, we know that no matter where we are or where we've been, God's arms are open wide. And God's grace and love are big enough for us all. So let's lift up our voices together and sing. Because God is so good. One, two, three, four. All my life, all I know, God's been good, good to my soul. Mountain high, valley low, I'm gonna sing wherever I go. You can clap along, it's all right like this. All my life, all I know, God's been good, good to my soul. Mountain high, valley low, I'm gonna sing wherever I go.
It is true that God is with us no matter where we are. So God, this morning as we lift up our voices, we pray that you would let us lean into your promises, that you have not forsaken us, that you've not left us, that you are the Lord our God, always and forever. So let's sing that together. Promise maker, promise keeper, you finish what you begin. Our provision through the desert, you see it through to the end. You see.
Let us pray. Gracious and loving Creator God, we thank you. We thank you for the depths with which you have reached into your creati creativity and blessed us with such diversity. God, for the ways in which you color the sky and the fields and the gardens, you know no bounds. And it was with the same care, the same beauty that you create us. With such individuality, a personality of gifts and talents, with colors and shapes and sizes, with passions and hopes and dreams, we thank you that in all that diversity you call us together as one body. Not to let go of who we are, but in the midst of who we are, to seek you in our whole selves, our bodies, our minds, our spirits, we come together to serve and to worship you, to be here for you in this world. Thank you. In your name we pray. Amen. Churches on foundation is Jesus Christ our Lord. We are His creation by water and the word. From heaven He came and sought us that we might ever be. For our scripture reading today, we'll be looking at Ephesus chapter 2, verses 11 to 22. This is from the Apostle Paul to the church at Ephesus and to us. Read together. So then remember that at one time you Gentiles by birth called the uncircumcision by those who are called the circumcision a physical circumcision made in the flesh by human hands remember that you were at that time without Christ being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers to the covenants of promise having no hope and without God in the world but now in Christ Jesus you who once were far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. For he is our peace. In the flesh he has made both groups into one and has broken down the dividing wall 
that is the hostility between us. He has abolished the law with its commandments and ordinances that he might create in himself one new humanity in place of the two, thus making peace, and might reconcile both groups to one God in one body through the cross, thus putting to death that hostility through it. So he came and proclaimed peace to you who are far off, and peace to those who are near. For through him both of us have access in one spirit to the Father. So then you who are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are citizens with the saints and also members of the household of God, built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, with Christ Jesus himself as our cornerstone. In him the whole structure is joined together and grows into a holy temple of the Lord, in whom you also are built together spiritually into a dwelling place for God. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Now our own Natalie Davis is going to minister to us in song.
Goodness, what a gift. Thank you for sharing it with us, Natalie. It is so good to be back today, Chapel Hill. I had the privilege um, last Sunday of preaching at Valley Center First Church and really enjoyed my time there. But as Dorothy said, she was a wise woman. There is no place like home. So it's good to be back. Um, as you might imagine, I have hit the ground running, trying to gear up and get ready for taking on my new role here on August the 1st, and particularly related to uh, worship. And again, you might imagine, I've been having a lot of conversations with people about worship. Recently, I had coffee with a friend of mine who goes to a different church, and I was telling her about, you know, my new role and my excitement, and, and she said, so your church has two worship services, right? I said, yep. And I knew what question was going to come next because I get asked it a lot, even before I took this role. Sure enough, she said, so which one is your contemporary service and which one is your traditional service? And I smiled and I said, both. She looked really confused. <laughs> and then she said, oh, okay, so um, you just don't advertise which one is contemporary and which one is traditional. So people, you know, just it's luck of the draw. You show up and you get what you get. That was the first time I'd heard that. I said, no, I mean, I mean, our worship services are, are a mix. They're, they're both contemporary and traditional. We're, we're a both and people at Chapel Hill. Thank you. And there was silence. I mean, silence such that if there were crickets, you could hear them chirping. She looked at me in, in just confusion and Finally, she said, but why? I, you have to pick one. Why, why try and do both? What would you have said? <laughs> because it's awesome. That is a good answer. <laughs> I like that. Before I tell you what I said, I want to look at our passage from Ephesians today because if ever there was a both and passage, this is it. The author, thank you, I like these amens. I could get used to this. The author was writing to an either or world, to a world where um, it was very clear. We had Jews and we had Gentiles, and, and it was clear who was who and who was in and who was out. And and that's the way it was until Jesus of Nazareth came along and, and messed everything up or made everything right, depending on how you look at it. Because, because the world that Jesus envisioned was topsy-turvy. He specifically sought out the sinners. 
He sought out the untouchables and he touched them. He was always getting after the religious leadership because they, they didn't have the vision to see God's mercy was bigger than what they imagined it could be. And, and so our passage in Ephesians last week that Reverend Jem preached on and, and that I preached on at Valley Center, it, it reminds us that God's vision, God's plans are so much bigger than, than we realize. That, that it, it came before us, but it includes us. And that in Jesus, we, we have every spiritual blessing that we could possibly need. We are justified, our sins are blotted out, we're given new birth, we're changed from the inside out. And then the start of chapter 2 today, before our passage comes along, the author reminds us that all of this comes through grace, not by our works. Amen. So that on our worst day, we don't need to despair. And on our best day, we don't get to brag. Now, that is important enough. I'm going to put it on the screen. On our worst day, we don't need to despair. And on our best day, we don't get to brag. It is all mercy and a gift. And God's plans are bigger than us, but they include us. So our specific passage comes along and reminds Gentiles, which includes us, that we were once outsiders. We tend to forget that sometimes. And it's important that we remember because when we forget, it's hard to welcome in other outsiders because they might mess up what we have going on here right we kind of we like it the way it is but our ephesians passage insists that we remember verse 13 now in christ jesus you who once were far off have been brought near by the blood of christ and we've been brought near not to replace anybody, but to, to mix all the outsiders and the insiders up so you can't tell who's who anymore. Because then, goes on to this big both and moment. Are you ready? I'm really excited about this. Verse 14, for he is our peace. In his flesh, he has made both groups into one and has broken down the dividing wall that is the hostility between us there's even both and in that verse give me some energy it's exciting it's a both and moment both gentiles and jews dare i say both democrats and republicans Both black and white, brown, yellow, orange, green, both gay and straight, both contemporary and traditional. And even better, Jesus doesn't, doesn't, insist on this both andness and then and then sit back to watch how we do at it to watch us make a mess <laughs> because sometimes diversity is kind of messy have you noticed that it can be a little chaotic but here's the secret sauce the first part of verse 14 do you remember what it said for he is our peace. So that means that Jesus didn't just give us an example. He didn't just teach us about peace. He didn't even just 
give us peace and then sit back. He is our peace, our embodied peace. In his life, in his death, in his resurrection, and in his living presence in and through us, he is our embodied peace. Now, speaking about peace, what do you think of when I say that word peace? You know what I think of? A gentle breeze blowing through the tree leaves, maybe no deadlines, no decisions to be made, a good book. It's so nice. And that's, that is lovely, but it's only part of the story of biblical peace. In Hebrew, it's shalom. I love that word. I could preach the whole sermon on shalom. Irene in Greek. And, and for, for Hebrew and Greek, shalom and irene, it's not just peace in a negative sense, like the absence of conflict. It's peace in a positive, like, like everything is as it should be. Life abundant. I think we have a word we use here at Chapel Hill for that, right? What? Zoe! We got to work on that, guys. <laughs> Zoe, abundant life. That is embodied peace. That is what we are talking about. And it's that peace that's in view as our author wraps up this passage with verses 21 and 22. In him, the whole structure is joined together and grows into a holy temple in the Lord, in whom you also are being built together spiritually into a dwelling place for our God. Isn't that amazing? We're being built into a dwelling place for God. All of us together, our God loves both and. And that is what I said to my friend that day over coffee. I said, our God loves both and. And so we're a both and people at Chapel Hill. You don't have to fit into a neat category at Chapel Hill. It's even in our mission statement. Not both and, although I'm going to work on that. Welcoming all people to experience and share the extraordinary grace and love of Jesus. We're a both and people, and our worship style reflects that. I don't know if you've ever paused to look around, if you're aware, but our congregation is, is a really interesting mix of people. We have, we have different backgrounds, different, different socioeconomic statuses. We have different political leanings, different colors, different lifestyle choices, different worship preferences. Is there room to grow in our diversity? Yes. But you want to know something really great? Jesus isn't done with us yet. We are being built into a dwelling place for God. Praise God, he is not done with us. So what's our role in it? Here's what I think. Our job, as we're being built into a dwelling place for God, is to press in close to Jesus, our embodied peace, to plug in to that source of power. How do we do that, Pastor Jen? I hear you ask. 
It looks and sounds so simple, but don't tune out because it's simple, because it's essential. Find a way every day to spend time with God. It doesn't have to be a big elaborate prayer. If you want to, pull up a chair and just talk to Jesus. And then every once in a while, listen to Jesus. I'm not very good at that, I'll confess. Read your Bible daily. If you don't know where to start, I love the Psalms, the Gospel of Luke. Meet with others in a Sunday school or a small group setting. Come to worship and find a way to serve. Now hear me say, we don't do those things to get a gold star next to our names on each one of them. God's not with a grade book. We are saved by grace, remember, not by works. But we do these things as a way to plug in to our source of peace, our source of power. We do them as a response of gratitude to God's love. And it's the, the synergy of God at work in our lives, in our spirits, building us up. That's what we celebrate and remember and live into every Sunday in our both and worship services. Because hear that, my friends, in our refusal to do either or, either contemporary or traditional, in our insistence on a both and worship service, we're celebrating and embodying that our God loves both and. You don't have to fit into a specific category when you come to Chapel Hill. It can be messy, but it's sacred, soaked with God's Spirit. So in the coming week, I'd like to invite you to join me in pressing in closer to Jesus on a, on a daily basis. Let's press in to our embodied peace, and, and let's look for ways that, that we are being built into that both-and dwelling place. And not just look for ways, let's make ways. When you come to worship every week, look for the both-and moments because they're everywhere. They're, they're in the great thanksgiving with the praise songs. They're in the hymns and the praise songs, the formal liturgy and the informal liturgy, the spoken prayers the silent prayers. We are a both-and people. Jeremy, would you put the next steps up for me? I'm going to invite you now to spend some time in silent reflection on whichever of these strikes your attention. These are just some suggestions for how we might press in close to the source of of our embodied peace. Let's spend a few moments with Jesus.
wonder if you'd join me in prayer as we go to the Lord together. Lord, today we give you thanks and praise for we find in you and you alone a source of joy and hope. You have been our strength when we have been tempted to give up and you have loved us when we wonder how anyone could. You've also been a prince of peace to us within us when our hearts have been troubled and in our relationships when we have not followed your example of love. Forgive us, Lord, and help us to be better than we have been. Be the peace we need by calming every storm and increase our faith to believe all shall be well in your time as we follow your ways. Fill us with your Spirit today in order that we might show one another your love and peace and patience, goodness, kindness, gentleness, and self-control. We come before you with needs that can only be met by you. Draw near to us all and touch each one in order that we might be healed. We lift up to you today these from our family of faith and beyond. Dr. Paul Murphy, Colton Hurt, Todd St. Louis, Pam Sharp, Christy White, Errol Root, Brad Sorensen, and Jeff Smith. Keep Rosa Wilson in your care. We praise you for answering our prayers for Jack Crandon, and we ask that you'd continue to strengthen him. Just now express to the Lord as you wait in his presence any concern for yourself and others. Take a moment to express your deep concern. O oh Lord, we give you thanks for the access we have today to the Father, the Creator of the universe, through Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. We invite our ushers to come.
as we prepare for communion, the praise team and communion servers are invited to come forward. The communion servers, please line up on the ramp over here by the organ. A worship assistant will pair you with your serving partner and tell you which section you're serving in, and then you will receive your elements after the liturgy at the altar table. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right, a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God, and Abba of all. And so with the angels and all the company of heaven, we forever sing your praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is Jesus who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate this sacred meal. We ask, O oh God, that you would make holy these gifts by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time that he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you. And eat it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was once ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Together, now we pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. In the United Methodist Church, we celebrate an open table. And what that means is that you do not have to be a member of this church or baptized into this church to come forward and freely receive of this gift. When it is time for you to come forward to your section, we invite you to exit through the right to come and receive the gift of communion by intinction. You're invited to hold your hands in a way that does offer receiving. It'll be placed in your hand. You'll take that wafer and dip it in the cup by way of intinction. There is a gluten-free station to the back, and if you prefer to have a cup that has been sealed and take that back to your seat, that is available at the station as well. Come taste and see that the Lord is good.
Thanks and praise, O Lord our God, for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself for us. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Will you stand for the benediction, please? You are so loved. May you go from this place full of the sure and certain knowledge that our embodied peace goes with you. Go and be a both and people in a world that needs that so bad. Go in his power and in his peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen and amen. Go with the wind at your back and the sun on your face with the song in your heart and the promise of grace. Go in peace and in truth and let love lead your way. Go. song in your heart and the promise of grace go in peace and in truth and let love lead your way go